Diamond Mac channel, welcome. Right, today I'm doing a video that is perhaps not too pleasing to my usual crowd of subscribers, but I'm gonna back it up, because I'm doing another watch battery video, yeah? But I'm gonna back it up a little bit by saying, if you're, uh, if you're making an endeavor to learn about jewelry and you've got your own, little, your own little setup at home, if people find out, they're gonna start giving you watches, like whether you want them or not. Like if people find out you can fix, fix jewelry, uh, they're just gonna assume you can do watch links and watch batteries. So yeah, this video might be useful to you because there's specific ways to take the backs off and glass comes out certain ways. You need special tools for them that you don't usually use as a jeweler. So uh, also it's just gonna be useful. Someone may have this specific watch and they're gonna try and do the battery themselves. So it's gonna be well helpful if this video is showing, showing how I took it all off and what it looks like inside and stuff. So it's gonna be useful to people and uh, yeah, let's get into it. After I said thank you to some new patrons, we've got Darren Lois, Catherine Horner, and Roundhill Media. Thank you very much, guys. Patrons, uh, I asked for patrons to give me a little bit of financial help to keep this channel going because it costs money to do this and just the time and effort for making the videos and editing and stuff. It's nice to actually get a little bit of financial encouragement. Um, so yeah, if you want to become a patron, help me out, share more of what I learned over the previous 25 years, being a professional full-time jeweler specializing in hand-making things. So uh, yeah, you can follow the link in the description and become a patron yourself and help me out. Get a shout out on the video and everything. Uh, cool, let's get into this. So if you found my channel because you're looking to learn a bit about jewelry, make some money on the side for yourself, I would recommend don't be picky about the jobs you're gonna do if you're starting out. The snobbery comes later. Like when you're making loads of money just doing mounts, then you can say, I don't do watch batteries, I don't buy gold or whatever. But when you're starting out, just do it all. Silver, anything. Like just get money wherever you can. And uh, I think that's especially relevant at the moment because there's some mad stuff going on in the world wars and that uh seems like uh there's some like famines on the horizon like they're trying to nationalize farming there's like farmers protesting all over the world that's really really not a good sign um that happened um, you can research what stalin did when he nationalized farming in russia like millions of people died in like one year mao in china relatively recently in the 60s he did it biggest famine in human history and it's sort of it's like <laughs> getting getting a whiff of it about to start happening again with all the farmers protesting all over the world so make money the poor people are going to suffer the most basically if you're already scraping by at the moment yeah you're in big trouble so if someone offers you money for a watch battery or a link job don't be snobby don't turn it down just take take it <laughs> if you can <laughs> I think it's good advice at the moment. Uh, right, let's take this back off. I'm just, I'm not, I've already done this video really, screw back the battery, so I'm just gonna sort of do it and you can just watch. Pardon the pun. This is a Seiko Diver's Watch V175. Do you know what I'm doing to help myself out? If food does become stupidly expensive and difficult to come by. I'm um, learning gardening. I've like bought some gardening equipment, <laughs> planting seeds and stuff. It's a nice hobby anyway, and it might literally be very, very helpful to know all that sort of stuff. Because uh, thinking about life in London, say there's no more food. How long before it all kicks off? A day, two days before people go out and start smashing up shops and stuff? Three days, four days. I haven't seen your cat for a while. <laughs> It'll get bad if uh, if the food stops coming. Right, everything I just did, I did on my previous video. That's why I'm not really showing it in too much detail. All right. So yeah, this is the dial. The face on this uh, watch is solar powered, yeah? It charges up the battery. So you need a special battery for it. It's got to be a rechargeable one. So you can't just put any old normal battery in it. It's got to be a, a proper one, which I did find online, but it's quite expensive. It was like 12, 13 quid, even like online price. So if you go to a shop for this watch, any sort of solar powered watch, I'm sure it'd be like 50, 55 quid or something. I don't know. All right, just having a close look at this before I start poking around. I think that battery just comes out, but this little bar thing is sticking up. It's just like springy and not quite touching the battery. So I think I can just pick at the battery and it'll come out. Oh, there you go. Obviously it's all delicate little parts. 
so you don't force nothing you really try and understand how things are meant to work before you start forcing stuff let's have a look at our battery what's that say on there 371 i don't think that's the correct battery 371 sounds very normal so look at this yeah i bought this ordered this from a online shop proper watch part supplier um yeah, it's got to be a rechargeable battery. If it's a normal one, a normal battery is just charged up and it depletes its energy as, a, as, the, as it works in the watch. This is solar powered, so you need a rechargeable battery because the light is obviously charging a battery up. It's a different type of battery. So this watch takes a 302334T. They're more expensive than normal. You can't put a normal, a normal battery in there. Totally different to what was in there. That fitted okay, whatever that was in there. That's wrong. There's a sticker on the back of this battery. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to pull that off or not, so I just checked on YouTube. And uh, yeah, there's already a couple of videos about this watch, so <laughs> that was handy. Um, so yeah, that, that sticker stays on, and there's a little, that little tab sticking out there that sits in that little space. So I know this, I can proceed confidently because there's a YouTube video, so I like YouTube videos. And also the guy, what the guy was doing, I'd never seen before. He had a bit of blue tack and he just wiped dust and dirt out from around there before putting the case back on. There's a little rubber, rubber seal, yeah, that sits on the outer edge of that case. I've got some spray for making the tires shiny, like silicon spray for car tires. Um, I reckon that'll be really good on these rubber gaskets. If I took that off, just sprayed a sponge and just wiped it on there, I reckon that would uh, give these a bit of life, clean them up nicely. So like I say in my uh, videos previously, even if you work on something that belongs to you or if it's just really cheap and whatever, you should always practice working skillfully, working carefully. You don't just ram the new battery in. And rotate things carefully. There you go, it just pops in. So yeah, if you always practice working skillfully, even on cheap, worthless stuff, when you do eventually get your hands on something expensive and valuable, you, you already work in the correct manner. Right, so let's see if that's working before, before I put the back on. Oh, yeah, it's ticking, look. All right, cool. Before I put that down with any force, just look around it and make sure that rubber seal's behaving itself. There is a chance one little spot could come out and then you're really gonna bulls it up if you squash it down on that seal. Because you've damaged the seal and the watch is not sealed properly and uh, it's not waterproof and yeah, if you're working for a customer, that's a problem. If your partner or family member or whatever is doing this kind of job at home, don't just suddenly like shout their name when they're doing something carefully because <laughs> people make you jump. Where I worked in London, we were always very careful with each other if someone was polishing, especially a chain or something that can catch easily. Uh, you can't just go, hey, and then just get their attention because if they jump, they might like let go of whatever they're polishing, smash it up. So you've got to wait or just gently knock on something just so they're like, hey, what? And get their attention. Don't make people jump when they're doing something delicate. That is, I'm not really sure, because I don't know about watches, I'm not sure how much pressure to put on there. But I just go by feel. I know that's tight, but I probably could force it more, but we're talking about delicate little things, so I don't like pushing too hard on them. But yeah, this is totally working now. So this watch is solar powered, yeah, so I'm just gonna put it under my lamp, <laughs> let it eat some of that light, and uh, gonna have a cup of tea, come back, set all the time and date and stuff jobs are good and I've ordered a new bezel not a ceramic one it can, you can get ceramic ones where obviously cost more just bought another aluminium one and I've got a new glass on the way from England I couldn't find one in Japan so yeah this, this watch will be on the channel again I'm going to be polishing the bracelet and putting it up for sale so let's see what happens